pretty well this time. Yes, we are live. All right. I have the chat here. Uh, I'll wait a little bit for people to be able to join the chat and uh, join this live session. Um, I don't get any messages coming in yet. Um, let me see. Unable to connect to chat. Oh, there we are. There we are. Yes. I see some messages coming in. Jane, hi from rainy London. There we go. Yes, hooray. <laughs> Hello from Texas, trip on two wheels. Ah, Bob Fry says great interview with Baldy. Interrupted for this. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, that was an interview that I did. When was it? Last week. All right, so I see a lot of people uh, coming into the chat. <laughs> we hear the bells. Yeah. I'm uh, quite close to a church here and uh, well, yeah, it's six o'clock, so the church bells are, <laughs> are going. All right, uh, I see a lot of people joining, that's great. Um, so I did the same as last time. So yesterday I said, hey, we're doing a live session, session today and uh, pop your questions if you can't make it and also on Facebook. Um, so I collected uh, some of your questions um, to be able to um, try to answer them. And then I will also have a look on the live chat and to see what people are saying there. People from Brazil, Leonardo, Marisa from Indonesia. Okay, so we have a lot of people from all over the world. I think what I want to start with this live chat, um, I just want to connect with all of you, uh, see what's up. Uh, I want to share some things about what I'm doing, um, but I'm also quite curious how all of you are doing. Uh, it's just been such crazy, crazy times uh, all over the world. And I always try to look at things from from a bright side and the glass is always half full um, but I have to admit that I do worry quite a bit um, I know that some of you are from parts in the world which are hit really really hard uh, and a lot of people are struggling with either um, uh, with health with people that are sick in their families or with jobs that, that disappeared um, and so yeah I do worry about you um, so I thought this may also be a moment to I don't know let me know if you are okay and if your family is all fine and how are you doing and if you're still in the lockdown or if you're able to go outside and maybe take your motorcycle out to I don't know uh, put your thoughts on something that uh, makes you happy um, so yeah that's that's what I wanted to say before I start uh, this live chat um, and yeah I, it just makes me happy to see all of you from all over the world connecting here uh, I think that's amazing um, so uh, let me give you uh, a couple of updates on what's going on on this side um, health wise I am absolutely fine I didn't get sick and none of my family everybody's doing okay um, so that's all good. Uh, but then when it comes to itchy boots stuff that's been going on, uh, I've been saying it a few times before, like oh, I've been working on a lot of things. Uh, that's also the reason why I'm not bringing out a video today um, because the videos that I've been doing here in the Netherlands, they are extremely time consuming. Uh, I put a lot of work in them to yeah, really make these videos interesting. Um, but to give you an idea, it takes me about three days to produce uh, one of those videos. Um, and so last week I've just been so busy doing other things. Oh, thank you, Srini Koka. <laughs> um, that I decided to do this live chat instead of a video. Um, so, and I've been really secretive about what I've been doing uh, the past weeks. And some of the things that I'm kind of working on are still not official or yeah, they can still change. So I don't want to um, say that yet and then say like, oh, it's not going to happen. Uh, but some other things uh, I can talk about. 
And one of the things that I've been working really hard on is uh, the merchandise. Because the buffs, I don't have, oh wait, here. Oh. Because um, the buffs that we've been doing, this one, maybe I'll first talk about this. Um, it's been going really well uh, with these ones uh, and not really well at the same time. Uh, it's been giving me so many headaches, these things, because uh, these scarves uh, that I sold in the pre-order, everybody in the Netherlands that bought it in the pre-order, they got it this week. Uh, but everybody that ordered it internationally, um, I tried to set up a contract with DHL to send it to you. And it is in progress, but they're taking forever. And there were already a lot of delays from the factory to produce them and then get them to the Netherlands. And it's just been taking so much more time than I hoped uh, and anticipated. Um, so anyway, so for the people internationally that ordered them in the pre-order, they are coming. I really, really hope that now on Monday, they just been keep on saying on, on Thursday, on Friday, on Monday, Anyway, so I really hope they are all packed and ready. It's only waiting for DHL uh, to put the, the stickers on and then they're out. Uh, and then you will also receive a track and trace code. So you will see, you know, that it's coming. Um, so that's the update about that. But that whole thing made me realize that if I want to keep on making stuff like this, I need to drastically improve this and change, yeah, make changes. Also, because when I start writing again, then obviously I don't have the time or I, I, I cannot do all of this. So I've been the last few weeks, I've been really busy to yeah, uh, set something up like a proper uh, web shop um, with uh, different types of merchandise. Um, and yeah, I, 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 need, I need help for that. So I was like, I, I cannot do everything by myself, especially not when I start writing again and I just want yeah this type of stuff be available when I'm on the road as well for you so I've uh, I now have a designer with whom I'm working on making the designs for it uh, I have people that are going to that are then going to help me to produce all this merchandise and then it's going to a fulfillment company uh, who are then going to handle the packaging and um, uh, the sending of it. And well, it's just, <laughs> it's just a massive operation. Well, it sounds massive or at least, yeah. Um, if I want to set this up properly, it just takes time. So I'm really busy with that. Um, next week, for example, I am going to a factory uh, for textiles. Uh, together with my designer and those people uh, and then I'm going to um, uh, yeah, find the, the, the textiles that I want to uh, use and sort all of that out and I'm really really excited about all of it um, and so I hope that all of you will be as well but yeah it's just it's just taking time it just takes time um, and then also what I also am working on is that I'm working on an entirely new website um, I think a lot of you already visit ichiboots.com, uh, but that will be entirely new. And um, yeah, there's also a lot of work going in that. So that's why even bringing out one video per week at the moment, I'm really, really struggling because I have so many other things <laughs> going on. Um, and I'm also doing all of this because I really want to continue with Itchy Boots for as long as possible. And so I thought, okay, now that I am here in the Netherlands, this is the time for me to set this all up and make this all happen. Because when I'm on the road, then all I want to do is create videos for you. And I just don't have the time and the resources to, to create all of this or to, to arrange all of this. Um, so I thought these months I'm just really using to kind of bring itchy boots to the next level. So hopefully I can continue with doing this for a really long time and I also have more time to connect with you because ultimately for me what I love doing is creating videos for you and staying in touch and I just noticed that was getting harder and harder so I'm trying to make some improvements there as well in the meantime I'm looking at the live chat and what <laughs> all of you are saying uh, there's still a lot of people coming in so that's great uh, People saying hi from Virginia, USA, Alex, 
And uh, Don Nishanta says, hi, Itchy Boots. Hi. <laughs> um, okay, let me go back to the story. Uh, what else did I want to say? Um, all right. Now, so that's the whole merchandise uh, story, what I've been working on. Uh, I also should really give you an update on the no. Uh, a lot of you, yeah, Jamie's also saying any updates on the no. A lot of you are uh, worried about the no, uh, me too, in a way. Um, but it's, I think I have good news because the temporary import permit um, of the no got suspended for six months. Um, and then the time that I still had on it, that also remains. So basically that means that I have to be back in Peru latest like early November. Then I should really be back and make sure that I get the no out of Peru. Otherwise she will still be confiscated. But for the next six months, I don't have to worry about that in that sense that she will be confiscated. So I think that is really, really good news. Um, in the meantime, she's just staying where I parked her. Um, uh, Saiful Atli asked me, will you have someone or a rep from the Dutch embassy to check on the no, since it could be some time before you can go back to Peru? Um, definitely not the embassy. <laughs> I think they, they are busy with other stuff than uh, checking on uh, my motorcycle. Um, but the people where I, I parked her, they keep an eye on her. And uh, last week they sent me an email with everything still fine and they made some pictures. So um, that's really good. So um, yeah, for now she's fine there, just waiting for me. Um, obviously a lot of people are asking what's, yeah, what's going to happen with the trip, uh, with Alaska, the plans. Um, oh, thank you Douglas Hall <laughs> for your support. Um, so about Alaska, obviously I still want to finish the trip. I just want to finish what I started. But realistically, it's just going to take time before I'm able to go back. Um, I think now Peru is saying that international flights will be again available from August. Um, obviously, I don't want to... Oh, sorry, I am interrupting again, but I just see Robger86. Thank you for your sweet message. I really appreciate it. Um, okay, I should not let myself be distracted. Okay, let me finish the story. The story was... Um, oh yeah, that um, I would really like to uh, finish my journey to Alaska. Um, but at the same time, I think it would be a mistake if I would jump on the very first plane to Peru when that starts up again. Um, so I'm not going to do that. On the other hand, I am also not going to wait, I don't know, until there is a vaccine which might be, well, I mean, I'm not an expert, right? But that might be still a year or two years. I have no idea. Um, I'm also not going to wait for that. Um, for me, this is not a, a holiday that can be skipped. It's my life and it's what I want to do with my life. So I cannot wait to go back to Peru, but uh, it will take time. Um, the situation there is, is pretty bad at the moment. The, um, I guess South, South America is the epicenter at the moment of the outbreak. Um, so it's definitely not the time yet. So I am thinking, I am hoping that I can go back there in October um, and, and, and see yeah, how the world looks like then. Um, but it's just, it's just pretty impossible to really make plans now when things are still changing so rapidly and uh, we don't know how, how things are going to unfold in the next few months. So I try not to make any proper plans, but this is kind of what I'm thinking and what I wanted to share with you. Oh, Ernest Gandara says Peru is still not peaking. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know that, but um, um, I, I just know that um, yeah, they're, they're struggling there. It's, it's really tough for the local people as well. So, um, yeah, it's really tough. Um, so, I want to say something else about that. What did I want to say? Uh, oh, yeah, somebody asked a question about that. Ian Clark said, are you planning on returning to your Patagonia to Alaska journey? So, yes. And if so, would you return to Lampa and continue the ride or just pick up the no from Lima and go from there? 
yeah, if I'm able to go back to Peru, I would obviously fly back to Lima and that's where Dano is. And I would not drive first two days south again to Lampa and then drive two days north again. Uh, I definitely don't think so. And if I would go there, um, I won't have much time on that temporary import permit uh, anyway. So my guess is if I'm able to go back, I'll probably have to uh, pick up the no, do the service first that I actually was planning to and that she needs, and then just immediately drive north and get the no out of Peru. So obviously the border with Ecuador needs to be open then, I need to be able to go in there. And yeah, there's just so many uncertainties at the moment that I, I, I can't really um, say much about it now. Um, so, right, that means that it's going to take a really long time before I can, yeah, produce amazing content or, well, try to produce amazing content for you. So obviously I am thinking, okay, what else can I do in the meantime? And um, as somebody saying, again, you're gaining some weight. I'm getting a lot of people saying that I'm getting fat all the time. It's really not nice. <laughs> anyway, um, so Europe, I think for, for people that are from Europe, they obviously also know this. Uh, Europe is opening quite some borders here and there. So traveling will be possible in Europe, I think, in the next few months. So obviously I am thinking Maybe I can ride a little bit in Europe uh, before I'm able to go back to uh, South America. I think that will be amazing and um, yeah, show you uh, a little bit more of Europe because obviously last time when with Basanti, I kind of just flew through Europe because I'm like, I'm almost in the Netherlands, <laughs> let's go. Um, but there's of course a lot more to see here and also a lot of places that I haven't been before. Um, so that's, that's a possibility. Um, which I'm uh, obviously uh, thinking about, but at this moment, it's just still too too soon, I think. Um, there's still a lot of borders closed, and um, yeah, it, it's, it's not, I think, not smart to do it already. I think I have to wait a little bit more. Oh, thank you, guys. <laughs> yeah, I should ignore those comments, I know. It's just recently a lot of people have been saying it to me, but I was like, what? <laughs> Um, per Erik Wahlberg says you still have much to show in the Netherlands yeah there's still a lot to show here um, it's just what I said before I don't know why these videos are taking me so much oh, actually I do know why because when I compare the videos that I try to make in the Netherlands to the ones that I make when I'm abroad riding when I'm abroad I just think okay today I'm riding to this from point A to point B and Let's go. And here in the Netherlands, I'm doing so much more research because I'm thinking, okay, I want to tell a special story. And here we don't have that amazing scenery. Like we don't have the Andes here. So um, even though we have really nice roads to ride a motorcycle, it just doesn't really translate very well on video. It just looks really boring on, on, on the footage. So I really try to, uh, yeah, I do a lot of research to try to make a story. And that's just really time consuming. Um, I wish I could you know, do that for my videos abroad as well. But yeah, then it would take me like 10 years to ride to Alaska. <laughs> um, okay, I see all of you are talking with each other as well. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Don't look here, just speak. Okay. Um, so there were some people that also asked me about Europe. Um, Chuck Anderson said, um, Norley, your videos are something my wife and I look forward to much. Thank you. Uh, uh, you mentioned, uh, in the meantime, what other parts of Europe do you plan to share with us? Uh, and Fritz Jensen also said, Norley, you missed on Scandinavia so far. So in the light of the pandemic, which is still on the right in South America, um, Denmark, Norway and Finland have had little virus compared to other countries. That sounds like a great alternative next adventure to me. What do you think? Definitely uh, Scandinavia appeals to me massively because I've actually never been to, uh, to there. I've, I've been to Copenhagen in Denmark and it's the only place. I've never been to any other parts of Scandinavia. 
Um, and it's obviously also the right time of the year. Uh, it's summertime, so that's a great time to uh, to go riding there. So um, yeah, I would I would love to. Um, but I think yeah, as I said before, I I cannot make any real real plans. I think if I decide to ride parts of Europe, it will literally be a few days before that I'm like, okay, I'm going now and I'm going there. And uh, it will not be uh, a lot of planning, kind of my normal style, <laughs> just go. Um, so yeah, I don't know yet, but um, uh, Scandinavia definitely appeals to me. I would love to love to go there. Um, Baltic states, says Marcus and Sonia. Yeah, that's also an area which uh, which I would love to explore. Yeah, right to North Cape, says Bob Fry. Did you also do it, Bob? Did you ride to uh, North Cape? Um, yeah, that sounds sounds really good to me as well. Um, thank you, Micah. Um, Tom Crew 47 says, welcome to Sweden. I think it says welcome. Cape North is a biker dream, says Sebastiano. Yeah, yeah. I've heard really amazing things about it. I saw some really, um, really beautiful footage as well. So yeah, uh, the, the possibilities are endless. Are endless. There's so much still to uh, to explore closer to home. Um, and that's already just riding around the Netherlands. I'm just thinking, wow, this is such a t <laughs> such a tiny country, and still there's so much to uh, explore if you just go and look. But obviously. This is my own country and I, I, I enjoy making these videos, but obviously I much rather just go to a foreign country uh, that excites me just a, <laughs> a little bit more. Um, all right, so that's the um, that's kind of the, 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 the plan for the next time, uh, which I, um, I wanted to share with you kind of what's going on. So don't expect any South American footage for a really long time. And um, yeah, the coming weeks, um, I don't think I will be able to bring out a lot of videos, um, but I hope you forgive me and that you know that I am working on so many other things. Uh, I'm not uh, sitting still at all. Um, and um, yeah, and that hopefully I'll be able to uh, ride in Europe uh, soon. I'm getting some really cool messages here. Yeah, a lot of people again talking about coming to India. That is, uh, I think, definitely not going to happen. Uh, all of you know that I think I started in India, so I've already been there. Um, and uh, I didn't ride in the south of India, but I've been to India three times traveled there for many months so for me uh, I really want to explore some other countries now and not go back to countries that have already uh, spent a lot of time uh, in um, yeah a lot of World War II histories in the Netherlands um, well actually I can give you a heads up because I did think about the next video uh, that I'm going to make in the Netherlands and because a lot of you are from uh, the US from Canada and from the UK uh, I thought maybe it will be interesting for you to show you some of the most important World War II places in our country um, because a lot of your, yeah, the, the, I said that, um, uh, what is the word in English? Um, the, our liberators were from your countries and uh, I think the Dutch people owe you so much. So I thought maybe it will be uh, cool to make a video about that. Um, I hope you uh, you would enjoy that. Um, uh, okay, I'm just getting some messages. I'm going to back to some of the questions uh, that were asked before. Uh, one about videoing technique from Tom Lind. Um, you said, when you are recording while riding, I assume you do short clips of recordings. I see that during an episode you will have points of view from the helmet can, GoPro stick, back of the bike and the drone. Do you use the remote with your GoPro cam? Uh, no, there is a remote control for GoPros and I've been thinking of buying one for some time just to try it out and see if, it, if it's handy. But as always GoPro stuff, it's really quite expensive and I haven't really felt the need to. Um, but yeah, I record short clips always, just switch the camera on and off. 
and uh, yeah I have to stop a lot of the time so um, um, stop to set up the drone stop to set up the selfie stick stop to put the camera at the back uh, and then film a little bit stop again take it off so <laughs> that's also why filming um, uh, takes a lot of time because I have to stop to work with the cameras uh, a lot of the time um, but yeah, maybe I should still get that remote. Maybe it will be easier for the back camera, but yeah, uh, I don't have one now. Um, Guido Sandruk also has a, a video in question. Um, you said your videos inspired me to make a South America trip next year as well, if Corona allows it. Question, do you use a gimbal for your walking videos and how often do you use iOverlander? I don't use a gimbal because I have GoPros which have amazing stabilization. You can literally do this with the camera and the footage is still going to be stable. Um, so I don't think it's really necessary. Um, and I Overlander, I use it every single day. So that's one of my main resources uh, when I'm on the road. Thank you Armani and thank you Glyn. Um, oh. Dim, Dim Sorosen says, Norley, how often do people recognize you on the road? Um, more and more. Uh, I've been recognized in the most obscure, tiny uh, villages in, <laughs> in Patagonia. That I was like, I'm really surprised that people were watching my videos there. Um, so it's often local people uh, in, the, and, yeah, the, in the traveling scenes, if I meet other travelers, then I also get recognized often. And um, yeah, it always makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> I think I've <laughs> mentioned that before as well. Oh, this is also, yeah, uh, Jao Ribeiro. This is also something that I forgot to mention. He says, hello, Norley, the tube scarf will be available again in the future. Yes, yeah, so I forgot. So for now, everybody uh, had that ordered in a pre-order. So I'm now working really hard to get them to you as soon as possible. Almost, almost. Um, but, and then as I said before, I'm also working on setting up a uh, web shop where things like these are available all the time. Um, so yes, they will be available again, but it will take time. So maybe in two months time, three months time, I really hope that then I have everything set and running and, uh, um, I just really want to make sure everything is working properly um, because doing these ones now with the pre-order was really a test for me and so many it went wrong on so many different levels um, because my current website just can't really handle this type of stuff um, it's <laughs> really kind of amateuristic type of web shop so I faced so many problems and uh, so many people emailed me with uh, questions and uh, uh, asking for help with it so um, I, I only want to launch the next yeah like a proper web shop when everything runs properly uh, because it's been so extremely <laughs> stressful for me honestly I've had like sleepless nights because I was so worried that things would go wrong and that people didn't wouldn't receive their order and it's just been incredibly stressful for me because I was just so worried that uh, I would disappoint people and um, so, yeah, to keep things also kind of fun, uh, I need to make sure that everything runs properly before I start launching uh, that. So, yeah, now you also know that. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, I got one more question on the live chat. The Man Cave Workshop says, how do you manage to keep the cameras charged on a day's riding? I just charge them overnight. I have loads of batteries. I have, I don't know, I think five spare batteries with me all the time that I charge overnight when I'm staying in a hostel. So then during the day, uh, that will always uh, be enough. Uh, <laughs> oh, one more about the batteries. No, I just uh, answered that one. All right. Let me go to this question. Um, I got a question from Rick Flashman that says, uh, so you say, right. Oh, yeah. I saw that you said that you have to cut back your USA slash Canada plans. 
Why do you even have a time limit for your trip? Just stretch it another year. Somewhere you need to be. <laughs> well, um, yeah, so what I've said is that, um, you know, considering or assuming that I'll just be able to go back to Peru and uh, finish the trip as planned. Um, obviously, there will be, there's a gap, so maybe it will take me six months before I can continue the trip. But I said, I don't want to extend my trip a whole other year. So that means that I still try to be in Alaska in summer 2021. And uh, so that, oh yeah, yeah, okay, back to the story. So that means that this that those months lost, uh, I was planning to make a really big tour through the USA uh, and Canada and that will not be possible then so that probably means that from mexico i have to cross pretty straight through the us and straight through canada to to make it in time um and the reason why i still want to do that is yeah because of the season so if i don't make it in summer 2021 and it will be summer 2022 then this entire trip is taking two and a half years and that's just too much <laughs> i mean um, I think as I explained before why I, I, I took one and a half years for it. I think realistically you can ride Patagonia, Alaska in a year and that's a long time and you have plenty of time to explore. But because of the seasons, I said, okay, I'll do it in a year and a half, which is a long time. And doing it in two and a half years, that's just way too much. You know, I want to do something else. I just then want to ride Africa or see another part of the world. Um, ah, Robert Kraft, this is also a question a lot of people ask me, what is your plan to get around the Darien Gap? I've, I get this question so many times and for me it's just, I don't know, it, it seems like a lot of people are really worried about that. Um, for people that don't know what we're talking about, the Darien Gap is uh, in between Colombia and um, Panama. Um, you cannot cross a, a land border there because it's all jungle and I think there's a lot of drug smuggling going on and it's just wilderness, like there's no road, like you cannot do it. So that means you either have to fly, uh, put your bike uh, on the plane again, or you have to take a boat. And those are the two options, flying or taking a boat. And uh, I have no idea what I'll do, but uh, I, yeah, I'll see it when I get there. So um, yeah, I don't, I don't worry about these things until I'm pretty much have to worry <laughs> about them um i don't see uh yeah i don't know why why i would worry about it now um susie roberts asked me a gopro question uh do you plug your microphone directly into your camera or if you use an adapter how do you make sure the camera is still waterproof thanks for inspiring us uh thank you um now gopros you cannot plug them directly in gopros it's really annoying i find it annoying and um, you need an adapter for that and um, i just stuck a, a little bit of um, kind of like rubber kind of in front of it so it's almost closed again and i've been using it in the rain and it, it never gave me a problem so it, that's easy to fix just um, yeah put a little bit of rubber and uh, that's it Oh, oh, I'm suddenly, some, sometimes this chat is just not working really well and just suddenly stuff pops up. Oh, oh, and now I'm pressing on another button. What am I doing? Oh, wait. Ah, okay. Uh, Garim Erragonol says, Hi, Natalie, I really like your videos. Now I'm cruising with my small GS around my home, but I would like to go on a bigger trip like you. And I want to ask you where you get the music for your videos. Uh, this is a question that a lot of people always ask me. So this question, uh, you can find it on itchyboots.com slash FAQ, frequently asked questions. There you will find the answer to how do I fund my travels? Uh, where do the names Dano and Basanti come from? Uh, where do I get my music from? Uh, th that type of stuff. Um, so there you will uh, find uh, where I get the music from. Uh, oh, thank you, PJH Scholtes, for the opzetten of our new website. 
Thanks. Thanks. Um, okay. And now I lost my little... Ah, yeah, here, here. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Gavin Fraser asked me a question which relates to the writing in uh, Bolivia. Um, you were wondering why I didn't use my jerry cans when I had to fill up my bike in Bolivia. Um, later, when I saw the comments in those Bolivia videos, it was unclear to a lot of people what was the deal with the whole petrol situation in Bolivia uh, because it was very hard for me to buy petrol and usually a lot of the petrol stations they wouldn't sell me directly in the tank and to be honest I also still don't know exactly what was going on it had something to do with having a foreign vehicle and they would have to do a registration a lot of paperwork and you would have to pay more and there were cameras and I don't know, it's just a really complicated story. But the bottom line was that I couldn't fill up directly and I had to fill up in a bucket or whatever. And the reason that I didn't use my jerry cans is that they only carry like three liters each. So if you want to fill up with three liters each, you will want to fill up the tank, I would have to walk back and forth like five times uh, or six times to also fill up the jerry can. So that's just a bit annoying. So it's better to take one bucket. So I hope I cleared that up. <laughs> <laughs> or made it even more vague <laughs> anyway um liam c says maybe a stupid question will you skip venezuela uh yes i will not pass venezuela because first of all it's not en route Ven venezuela is sitting east of colombia so you don't have to pass through it uh, and i was never planning to uh, go through venezuela um, i think that was not really the safest uh, option um, <laughs> Phil says, do you ever delete any video you recorded? Recording all day in full HD must be a lot of data. Yes, and I don't record in full HD. I record everything in 4K. So the files are huge and I never delete anything. Um, and I never actually lost anything either. So yeah, you imagine I just have, I don't know, six external hard disks with two terabyte each or something like that i just have a lot of external <laughs> hard disks where i keep all of it yeah uh oh yeah mac Meaty says any issues with your us visa status due to the covid situation i don't know i don't know i have my visa um but I don't know if they will uh, change that or if I have to reapply again. I really don't know um, at this moment. I think it's still valid now, but yeah, you never know. I think these rules uh, can change uh, very quickly when it comes to uh, US immigration. Um, so yeah, let's just keep your fingers crossed that the visa that I have uh, is still uh, available. Um, hey. Maybe I've missed this in the beginning of the chat, but I was also hoping that you guys would write me how you are doing. And if you're able to go outside and take your motorcycle for a ride if you want to, and if you're healthy and your family is good. So please also write me some of those messages because I don't want to just talk about myself the whole time. <laughs> Um, I just also want to know how you guys are doing. Um, I do also enjoy reading where you're from. Uh, that's really cool. Somebody also suggested me once to ask uh, if you comment on a video on YouTube to end your comment with the flag of your country. And I don't know how all of you feel about it, but I thought it was so cool. Um, of course, in YouTube analytics, I can also see where the viewers come from, where you can see percentages like this percentage views from the United States or whatever. But I think it's also really cool to um, to see the flags and yeah, it's also educational to learn all these <laughs> different flags because I definitely don't know all of them. Um, okay, things are looking good in Croatia. That is very good news. Um, I, I Maybe it's just, I'm just really hoping for good news positive stories happy news positivity because um, yeah 
it is just hard to uh, stay positive I think uh, when there's just so much bad things going on so yeah just let's share some positive news and um, that just makes me happy John Button in California doing very well riding most weekends including a few multi-day trips and camping that's amazing uh, all good on the big island of Hawaii we can get out by the ocean oh that that sounds amazing amazing we've been having relatively good weather in the Netherlands uh, the past weeks and that's actually yeah has been really nice because um, if you're sitting inside and it's also raining that's also a little bit depressing Texas is open for business Italy here Simone Caligari good to hear from you how are things going in Italy um, I'm curious starting to see the light in Spain that's good Spain is also on its return Iran is 100% open everything is functional Positive. Recovery rate in India is almost 50%. Madhav. Positive news. I can go out. Have a game of football. I am liking this, people. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I, I am really liking all these nice, nice messages. In Sweden, I can drive my Triumph Explorer wherever I want, but keep social distance, says Jonas Olsen. Arizona girl going for the first ride tomorrow. Chris has asthma, so has been on lockdown since March. Enjoy your ride tomorrow. I am keep my fingers crossed for good weather. All right, this is really good. I'm going to read some of these comments back later. Um, let me answer a few more questions. Um, let me see. Oh, this is also a good one, maybe, um, because I just saw somebody talking also about uh, if I'm worried that that my bike will get stolen on the trip. And Alex Warren said, uh, hey, Nurli, I'm planning to go from Ireland to Tajikistan after being encouraged by your videos. Thank you. Um, then you asked me what locks or security to use on the bike. Losing my bike is a bit of a concern. Thanks again. So the funny thing with the whole bikes being stolen here in the Netherlands, I am petrified that my motorcycle gets stolen <laughs> or generally like in Western Europe. I don't know what it is, but all around Asia, Central Asia, uh, also Eastern Europe, I have had zero fear. It feels so incredibly safe there. Uh, I never thought people were going to steal my motorcycle, um, but I do have a, how you call that? Schijfremslot. <laughs> Can some Dutch person help me? Schijfremslot, how do you translate that? It's a disc, disc brake lock, I think. You know the one that you, you put on the on the on the disc brake brake disc thing. Um, they are quite heavy, so that's a downside to drag it with you. But they're not super big, um, so I do carry one of those with me, um, so that if I have to park it on the street somewhere, uh, then I can put and then I can use it. But I think from my videos as well, you'll be surprised that I think nine out of ten times I can always park my motorcycle somewhere inside or inside a garden behind a gate. So it's very rarely that you have to park it on the street, uh, but if you do, then I would uh, recommend bringing uh, one of those. Yeah, oh yeah, disc lock. Disc locks, thanks. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you guys, it's a disc lock. Bring one of those. Um, mm -mm. Then a question from Jan Jan Roth. Three questions. When you start, first started overlanding, what did you initially fear? After experience, how did that change? And what are your concerns going forward? Um, I, I, was, I was reading this question, I was thinking, I don't think I really feared something and I don't think that changed. And I don't think, I don't know, I just don't do this out of fear. I think if you have a lot of fear doing such a trip, then I think maybe it's not really for you because I do think if you are too afraid you're not going to enjoy it at all um, so then maybe it's it's not really for you and that's okay you know it's not like you should be doing it um, but I honestly I, I, I don't really fear anything um, 
obviously the only thing I maybe fear now is just the uncertainty, but everybody has to deal with that and nobody really knows what's uh, going to happen. But um, yeah, that's not really we fear, I guess. <laughs> you the melt, can we get more Zumba class? No, no, that's a, <laughs> that was a one time thing. I'm also not very good at it. But uh, yeah, no, no, definitely not. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, another question. Um, Sorin Visa Lesku said, I saw Elspeth Baird at a rider meeting in my hometown, Bucharest, a couple of years back. She gave a nice presentation. Do you ever plan tours like that and tell your stories in the flesh? Um, yeah, she is obviously, she's a legend. I think she was the, wasn't she the first woman to ride the world on a motorcycle? I think she was. Um, yeah, I've been thinking about that, um, like giving presentations or something. And it's been something that was on my mind for some time. Uh, but now, obviously, it's out of the question. Uh, big gatherings, blah de blah you know what I mean. Um, but if that changes back, then it's definitely something that I might uh, might do, and um, if if there's people interested in that, <laughs> in that of course. But um, yeah. Oh, Kevin Gambrel didn't know that Zumba existed up until. <laughs> oh, really, Zumba has been around for years, I think. Yeah. Um, the mountain peak visa visa process for entering one country to another in bike. I'm always getting a lot of questions about visas and how to arrange visas, but it's just really not something that I can really advise you on because visas just depend on where you are from and where you are going. Depends on the passport that you have and the country that you're trying to enter. And the rules are different for every passport or destination country. So you just have to look it up online, Google it, uh, and see whether you can enter a country without a visa uh, like I've been doing in the whole of South America I don't need visas in any of these countries I just get a, a stamp and I can stay usually between 30 days and 90 days I can stay in the country with just a stamp when I enter and that's it but that really depends on your nationality so always check that <laughs> Oh, yeah, two wheel fun. Thank you for the support, by the way. You said advice, get a GoPro plus membership, unlimited cloud data for a fiver, upload and wipe your drives. I've, I, I did try that uh, in the iCloud, but uploading 4K footage on not so strong internet, where usually where I am, it's impossible on like weak Wi-Fi connection uploading where it is so extremely slow it's just not possible I tried it a couple of times and it's just it's just too big the files are too big it's a good idea though but it doesn't it doesn't work <laughs> all right um yeah Raja Bay says hi Nori can't wait to see you hit the road again love from Malaysia how about trying a bike camping the next trip well, to be honest, I was thinking if I'm going to, if I'll be able to ride through Europe, um, then it's probably a good idea to start camping um, because, yeah, Europe is just really expensive, um, and I would, I would like to do some camping. Um, I've explained before why I normally don't camp. It's just impossible to keep my YouTube channel alive with three videos a week without having internet every day and to do all the social media and recharge all my equipment. Um, I'm just bringing out too much content to, to wild camp somewhere. But I was thinking maybe um, if I do a shorter trip around Europe, I can uh, make it happen. Uh, and then I can also maybe give some advice on uh, camping stuff. Because uh, yeah, I also don't have any experience with bringing all this camping gear on a motorcycle. So, um, yeah, but I don't think I will never be become an expert in in camping. So yeah, maybe my advice is not really what you're looking for <laughs> anyway. Then, All right? Um, okay, I was thinking to keep this live chat an hour this time, 
uh, and not keep on uh, chatting away. So I have 10 minutes left. I'm just going to read some uh, some of your comments. Yeah, Lilian Avenir says you have Wi-Fi and electricity in European camping. Okay, so now I don't have any excuses anymore. <laughs> and I have to go camping. Okay, let's do it. Um, visit Bo See, another one saying you're gaining weight. Rover's log. What is it? What is it with that? Um, yeah, somebody says also, if you're going to ride through the USA, you may want to camp. Hotels are very expensive. Yeah, so maybe it's good to get some experience with uh, camping here in Europe. I mean, obviously, I've been camped before. I've camped a lot in my life, but never uh, while traveling on a motorcycle. Um, Axel A. Hamfink says, watching your video about dog attacks, did you get a, a preventive rabies vaccination in advance to your travels? Yes, I did get uh, a rabies shot. And that means that if you get bitten, you still have to get another shot. So it doesn't, uh, it's not enough to get the one in advance. You still need to get one after you've been bit, but you buy more time. So by having that first shot, you have more time to get to a clinic and, and find that second shot. And I've also, as, as far as I understand, that second shot is also more widely available and the first sh shot is not or something like that. Anyway, yes, I, I, um, I am prepared in that sense because um, yeah dogs do attack in a lot of places um, yeah question mark says it will be a shame if you have to blast through uh, BC Canada on your way to Alaska so much to see here yeah I know I know but I also didn't anticipate uh, all of this um, Oh yeah, Metzit Tetsio says, can you please solve the delivery problem to some countries? Um, yeah, that's also for the web shop. I don't think I will be able to get packages to every country in the world, just because some countries are just, stuff just doesn't arrive. And I don't want to sell something and then it never getting there and people being disappointed or yeah, just stuff never arriving. Um, so yeah, I hope I'll be able to um, send things to many places, but in the end I will never be an Amazon or I don't know, some, well, what's another big one? Well, I, I'll never be an Amazon, so I, I'm not, so big that I can just deliver to uh, every single place in the world and make sure that it also gets there. So yeah, let's see um, uh, what what will be possible. But um, yeah, I hope you I hope you also understand it from my point of view that uh, um, I just if you buy something, it needs to get there with you, and that's really important to me. Um, <laughs> thank you, Simone Cagliari. <laughs> All right. Okay, nice, Sander. Uh, he sends me a Dutch message, but uh, you bought your first motorcycle gear, everything, and now you're getting your driver license. All right, good luck, good luck. Get it in one go, I really hope so, because getting your driver license here in the Netherlands is expensive. So uh, I hope you um, get it in uh, one go. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, Daryl Moffat says, Get with Tim at 40 times around. He's been camping around the USA for a year now. He can advise you. I follow his channel actually. So yeah, he does some uh, really good instruction videos about this type of stuff. So I can definitely uh, learn from him as well. Mm -hmm. Ah, Moa says, Wann kommst du nach Deutschland? When am I coming to Germany? So I was in Germany accidentally in the last video. <laughs> Ah, that, that is funny in like borders in Europe, um, that, that, that in that position or that location, there is just nothing. So you have the highway that runs from the Netherlands to Germany or the other way around. Um, and there's not even, there's not, there's just nothing. Suddenly there was a sign saying, welcome to Germany. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I just missed the last exit. Um, 
but yeah, maybe Germany will be part of my uh, small Europe tour. Let's let's see how it all goes. <laughs> Pause 360 says, deliver packages yourself, please. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't think that will be possible. I cannot bring all of them on, uh, on a motorcycle. Come to Belgium. Yeah, yeah. There's too many places. I can't do them all. All right. Uh, let me get one more question that was asked before. Um, oh yeah, Ethan Flatten was asking me a question about low quality fuel. Uh, you said, how fussy is Dano with low quality fuel? Wait, what did you say? Is it, oh, oh, I did something wrong. Is it usually just efficiency? that suffers or does actual motor function suffer like ignition trouble um, so the funny thing is that um, I haven't had any low quality fuel problems really with the no um, and with Basanti I had them in the beginning um, but then I am using these uh, fuel filters from Google Tech and they filter both like particles or dirt or whatever is in the in the petrol but also water so it also filters out water and that's probably even even worse um, so when you have fuel with a low octane level that's not going to get the better but it it is cleaner uh, if you have the filter so since i have that and that filter goes around my fuel pump inside my tank and uh, that's where you have to uh, install it and then you can put another one an extra one uh, at the tank opening so then you filter even twice and doing that I never had any 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 issues um, so I cannot really compare how the bikes doing without the fi filters except that yeah with Basanti I had problems uh, or a really really filthy uh, uh, pump when I was going through Iran I had bad fuel so yeah anyway my recommendation would be if you know that you're traveling to countries with bad quality fuel is to get uh, one of these filters because they're really good and they're available for a lot of different bikes um so yeah i would check that out if i were you thank you ice ace you're awesome thank you next ice cream on me perhaps <laughs> thank you <laughs> all right um somebody's asking me translations for Mexico I cannot translate a live chat unfortunately um, all right there's still quite a lot of uh, yeah there's a lot of questions coming in that I've already answered at the beginning of this live chat so uh, in order not to repeat myself uh, too much um, as always this live chat will come online uh, when it's finished so then you can also watch the beginning and then um, hopefully I've answered your question there. All right, I'm going to answer the last question and then um, that will be it for today. Um, all right, from Michael Lund Sorensen, you said, fantastic work you are doing, big fan, thank you. Uh, you said, clothes, are you depending on your Gore-Tex suit or do you also have a rain suit to protect you? So for the, the, um, the Revit suit that I've been wearing on the South America trip, the black one, um, it has the Gore-Tex inside as a separate layer um, and it works fantastic. I am super happy with it. Um, I haven't, uh, you know, riding through the rain, riding in the cold is now not a problem anymore. So that's a massive improvement from what I was doing in season one <laughs> in Tajikistan when I was freezing and cold and wet and uh, it was not nice um, so yeah for that suit I have the Gore-Tex inside um, now I have this white or light gray suit that you've been seeing in the most recent uh, videos and that suit I want to take to like the tropics so when I'm riding in really really hot conditions and then I'm thinking I prefer to have a rain suit that you can put over it because then you don't want to ride with the Gore-Tex all the time if it's really like hot and humid. But then if it suddenly starts raining, then I think it's easier if I can just pull a rain suit over it quickly and not take off the jacket, put the inner Gore-Tex and then that doesn't really make any sense. So that's going to be my strategy when I'll be riding in the tropics. 
Um, but yeah, let's see uh, when, the <laughs> when that's going to happen. All right. Um, I think that's it. Um, I hope that uh, I gave you a bit of an update of what's going on and about what's coming. I really enjoyed uh, getting all the messages and all the good news. Um, thank you very much for sharing. I'm going to go through the live chat um, after this is done and read all the good news that you've been writing me and how you're doing in your country. Um, also feel free to comment this on the normal YouTube videos. Just let me know uh, what's going on and uh, if you're all okay. Um, yeah, I just really uh, enjoy reading that. Um, so yeah, um, I'm just going to do my ending. So that was it for today. Uh, everybody say goodbye now too. Cool. Um, so yeah, goodbye everybody. Thank you for uh, joining me in the chat and uh, watching this if you watch it back. And um, I hope to bring out a uh, video again next week. Um, so I will see you then. And now I have to try to stop this live chat again, which is always this awkward moment when I have to find where I have to do that again. Oh dear, when do I stop it? And stream. Yeah, I think I think I think I have to I have to do this and stream. Okay. Uh, yeah, that was it for today, and uh, see you in the next video and all of that uh, thumbs up stuff. Okay, bye. And stream and stream and stream and.